Hello, my name is Paolo della Versana. I am a senior geophysicist at ENI, SPA, Upstream and Technical Services. And today I'm going to talk about seismic fashion classification using multimedia and machine learning. This is the outline of my lecture. After a brief introduction, I will explain the fundamentals of the methodology. Then I will go through a real example and finally I will conclude. This slide includes uh, the key um, message of this lecture. Similar to natural intelligence, also artificial intelligence can be improved if it is able to analyze and interpret multimodal information. For that reason, if we train a computer using multimodal sources of information, this can increase the possibility of linking different types of information discovering new links and finally improving our knowledge. This is the conceptual scheme of the methodology. Uh, we start from multimedia files, including images, sounds, text, video, any type of multimedia information. And this uh, information will represent a sort of multimedia footprint that we use as an input for our multimedia machine learning system. This includes uh, uh, supervised and unsupervised uh, machine learning algorithms uh, able to perform clustering, classification, or prediction of uh, continuous outcomes. We can have many different applications in uh, geophysics, including uh, seismic fascist classifications, in particular distinction between low gas saturated sands from high gas saturated sands that will represent the example that I'm going to discuss in this lecture. We can uh, apply this methodology to composite log analysis, uh, integration of different types of uh, geophysical data like uh, uh, electromagnetic data, seismic gravity. Uh, sands represents a very important part of uh, this multimedia machine learning system. So let me give you a quick recall of how we extract sands from uh, geophysical data. In, in this example, we have a seismic trace and its spectrogram. So the first step is to extract the spectrogram from the seismic data, from the geophysical data in general. And then from the spectrogram, we extract amplitudes, uh, frequencies, all the attributes that are useful for creating MIDI files. MIDI means musical instrument digital interface. It is a typical uh, musical protocol that uh, we use in um, digital music. And then we can play using uh, these digital sounds uh, using a sequencer, a typical software that is able to interpret the MIDI uh, files. For example, here we have five examples of uh, uh, different types of uh, MIDI displays. We can create MIDI files from every type of uh, time series data. Uh, in the upper panel, we have seismic data and the correspondent uh, MIDI display of seismic data, just a small part of the seismic trace. On the horizontal axis, we have the time, the execution time of the MIDI file, that in this case is proportional to the travel time of the seismic data. And on the vertical axis of each one of these uh, five panels, we have the pitch. So pitch is related to frequency. And in colors, we have uh, sound intensity that is related uh, to uh, the amplitude of the uh, data, of the uh, seismic data in this case. Uh, for instance, in, in this particular displays, in red, we have high sound intensity. In blue, we have low sound intensity. In the second panel uh, from top, we have uh, a MIDI file, a MIDI display of an eruption, a big eruption. In the third panel, we have a MIDI display of a masterpiece of Johann Sebastian Bach. In the fourth panel, we have a, a, a MIDI file, a MIDI display of the earth beat. And finally, in the uh, last panel, we have a, a small piece uh, of a resistivity log represented as a MIDI display. So you can see that we can represent any, every type of information using uh, a MIDI protocol. Then from these uh, MIDI files, we extract features, features related with the frequency, related with the amplitude, uh, but also related with harmonic properties or melodic patterns or rhythmic patterns contained in the data. 
After doing that, we can uh, use all these media attributes. We can extract about 100, more than 100 uh, media attributes. We include all these media attributes in the same hybrid feature matrix that uh, we use for uh, including uh, spectral features extracted from seismic data or image features or text features, any type of uh, uh, attributes. This will be combined in the same big uh, hybrid feature matrix. And this matrix will represent the input of our multimedia machine learning system. This machine learning system includes many uh, classification and clustering algorithms, many uh, processing algorithms, uh, like uh, principal component analysis, uh, preprocessing algorithms, and so on. And uh, we can use artificial neural networks for classifying our data, but also we can use support vector machine uh, algorithms or random forest decision tree, many, many different types of uh, uh, machine learning algorithms for uh, clustering, for uh, classification, or for uh, predicting continuous outcomes. And we applied uh, this multimedia machine learning system uh, to many different types of, of data. In particular, in this lecture, I would like to show you a very important example. Uh, this is a methodological test addressed to seismic fascist classification, but it is addressed to a very particular specific um, uh, geophysical problem, the so-called Fitzwater uh, problem, that is uh, the difficulty of distinguishing low gas saturated sands from high gas saturated sands. So the key geological elements of this uh, specific example are represented in this uh, slide. Uh, so we have a stack in the reservoir uh, consisting of unconsolidated gas bearing sandstones uh, deposited in a turbidate uh, channel system with a very high heterogeneity, uh, strong erosional effects uh, with a vari variable co uh, clay content and uh, um, this is a stack the reservoir consisting mainly of two different layers. Um, in, the, in the upper layer, uh, the well logs revealed uh, low gas saturated sands. Instead, in the lower formation, we have high gas saturated sands. And the se uh, seismic signal is uh, not very different in these two cases. And we can uh, be confused. Uh, we, have, we can be not able to distinguish the two different scenarios, low gas from high gas saturated cells. This is uh, a small part of the seismic uh, section. In the middle part of this uh, section, we have a, a well drilling two, uh, two reservoirs. And uh, on the right part, uh, we have also the CPI, the, the, the logs recorded in this well. And uh, this seismic section and the well logs are at a different scale because of the different resolution. Anyway, there are the arrows that helps you to correlate the logs with, with the seismic section. You can see that there is an arrow linking the low gas saturated sands with the upper uh, seismic anomaly in the section. Uh, and then there is the high gas saturated sands in the bottom, uh, so the, the lower layer. And uh, they show uh, quite similar uh, amplitude. There is also another uh, interesting uh, seismic anomaly on the right part of the section. But uh, in any case, it is quite difficult uh, to uh, interpret this data in terms of low gas or high gas saturated sands using just seismic data, uh, this uh, seismic image, or conventional seismic attributes. For, for this reason, we try to use our multimedia machine learning uh, system, including also our special musical uh, media attributes uh, for uh, trying to distinguish high gas saturated sands from low gas saturated sands in this section and in the surrounding area. So, uh, just to recall uh, what, what I mean by MIDI uh, features, uh, in this case we have a, a, seismic, a single seismic uh, trace in the upper panel, and uh, this trace uh, crosses uh, both layers, the low uh, gas saturated sands uh, and the high gas saturated sands, respectively marked by the red and uh, uh, the green bars. 
And uh, in the lower panel, we have the MIDI file, the MIDI display. Uh, in red, we have high amplitudes corresponding to uh, high MIDI sounds. And from uh, these types of, of data, I mean seismic traces and uh, MIDI uh, attributes, MIDI files, we can extract respectively standard features si like those related with uh, seismic amplitude or instantaneous frequency and so forth. And uh, we can extract also the MIDI features from the MIDI file, including MIDI pitch, sound intensity, note length, melodic patterns, harmonic patterns, rhythmic uh, patterns, and so forth. And these uh, MIDI features are completely new in, uh, in geophysics, and we think that they can contribute to classify seismic fetches, and in particular in this specific problem, they contribute to distinguish high gas saturated uh, sense from low gas saturated sense. Uh, just to show you a, a, an example of sensitivity of, uh, of these uh, MIDI, uh, MIDI files, MIDI, MIDI features, uh, here you can see uh, three uh, statistical uh, distributions, so just three examples among many others, of three uh, different MIDI features, respectively the most common pitch, the rhythmic variability and the average note duration. You can see that uh, using this, uh, just using these three attributes, we are able to separate, to distinguish different types of seismic fishes. I mean, uh, clays or high gas saturated sands and low gas saturated sands. So respectively, uh, the green, the, the, the blue and the, the red curve. And uh, you can see that they are properly separated depending on the feature that we, we are using. If we use all these features together, plus many other features, I, I repeat myself that we have about 100 MIDI features that we can import in our system, we are really able to discriminate, to distinguish the different fashions. Uh, so the first step of our uh, machine learning approach was to perform training uh, on a labeled data set. So we created a, a training data set uh, around the world, selecting a few uh, data around the world, and we trained our, uh, our system on this labeled uh, data set. And, and then we performed cross-validation tests. Uh, this means that we uh, partitioned uh, the labeled samples, the labeled data set, uh, into two complementary subsets. Uh, first, we perform the classification, so we, we test our different uh, classifying algorithms uh, in the labeled subset of the data that is called uh, training uh, subset. And finally, we validate the performance of our learner, uh, or the different learners, uh, using uh, the other labeled subset of the data that is called validation set. And then we can evaluate uh, quantitatively the performance of the different uh, machine learning algorithms. In our system, we have many uh, learners, so many different types of algorithms. Uh, here we are showing just four examples of uh, performance of four different uh, um, algorithms of machine learning. Uh, decision tree, artificial neural networks, random forest, and support vector machine. And we are using a confusion matrix. Uh, the confusion matrix um, basically show uh, the recognition rate of the different learners. Uh, basically, you have to look at the principal diagonal of these different metrics for each one of these uh, algorithms. For instance, if you look at the random forest matrix, you can see on the principal diagonal that uh, if we compare the predicted uh, class versus the actual class, we have a very high rate of good prediction, very close uh, or still equal to uh, 100%. Uh, this is a these are just a couple of examples of uh, classification, just a few labeled samples extracted from our training dataset, showing you uh, the capability of distinction uh, of, uh, uh, in this case, support vector machine algorithm using just a couple of uh, uh, MIDI features uh, like uh, 
uh, average note uh, duration uh, versus uh, rhythmic variability, uh, again, average note duration versus uh, melodic interval. So these are very new uh, features that we are using for separating, uh, distinguishing the different classes. And you can see that the, the separation, the classification is pretty good. We have still some uh, uncertainties, um, some points fall in the wrong uh, field, but I, I remind you that we are using, in this case, just two MIDI features. Uh, when we use uh, all the MIDI features all together, the classification is much better. Uh, I can show you this concept using uh, uh, the technique of principal component analysis. Basically, uh, with principal component analysis, uh, we, we use a, a mathematical technique for uh, transforming our data into a, a different algebraic space of MIDI features. Uh, we use a, an, article, an orthogonal transformation uh, to convert a set of observations of correlated variables into a new set of values of linearly uncorrelated variables that are called principal components. In this case, I am mapping our uh, few examples of data, of labeled data, in a two-dimensional space consisting of uh, first two principal components. And here you can see that the distinction is uh, almost perfect between the three different uh, classes, respectively glaze, um, low gas saturated sands, and high gas saturated sands. We can see also that there are a few samples uh, falling in the uppermost part of the display. Probably they belong to uh, a different class. So instead of three classes, we should consider four classes. In fact, we improved our classification process, including also a fourth class in the process. In this slide, we plot uh, schematically our classification results on the seismic section. We applied all the learning algorithms, uh, including uh, artificial neural networks, uh, random forest, decision tree, naive Bayes, uh, adaptive boosting, and others. And uh, here we are just showing you an example of performed using a support vector machine. And uh, um, here you can see in colors the different classes uh, superimposed on the, the seismic section. We created a zoom in the critical area. You can see that uh, uh, we have a pretty good distinction between uh, prevalent clay formations from shales from high gas saturated sands in blue and low gas saturated sands in green. So basically, uh, we think that this approach is extremely efficient for uh, classifying seismic fascias and uh, in particular for solving the very difficult problem of uh, distinguishing high gas saturated sands from low gas saturated sands. We run all the uh, algorithms automatically, so it is uh, a mathematic process uh, uh, through sequential steps, uh, including uh, training, uh, calculation of confusion metrics, uh, analysis of performance of the different algorithms, and finally, uh, application of all the algorithms in parallel uh, for classifying the data. And uh, we use the both seismic features but especially MIDI features, including the rhythmic uh, uh, attributes, melodic attributes, and the harmonic attributes. By the way, you can also listen to this data. You can find a lot of uh, examples of our uh, MIDI-converted seismic data in, uh, on YouTube, in particular on my YouTube channel. And uh, you can listen to the seismic data or to do well logs or to the earth beat in terms of musical um, uh, sounds uh, extracted from these files. Uh, but what we were able to perform in this example was to classify automatically, using machine learning, multimedia machine learning approach, our seismic data. And just to give you uh, some statistical information, uh, the computation time was just a few seconds running all the, the algorithms uh, simultaneously. In this case, uh, we have a simple test, uh, let's say a simple methodological test consisting of two data, uh, 2D data, um, 
for a total uh, section length of about five kilometers. But the uh, uh, performance were very quick, was very quick, very, very rapid, just a few seconds for running all the algorithms in parallel. So in conclusion, uh, media attributes uh, can support uh, standard attributes uh, and other attributes for creating a, a multimedia footprint, a multimedia input for running machine learning. And so all this information, including uh, sounds, images, uh, text, but also video can be included uh, in the same uh, uh, hybrid feature, feature of metrics uh, for running uh, uh, many different types of uh, uh, learning algorithms. In particular, MIDI features show the very high classification power, and they allow uh, us distinguishing, at least in this case, low gas saturated sands from high gas saturated sands. Uh, a benefit of the MIDI uh, attributes is that uh, MIDI files occupy very low memory space. So uh, big data mining, clustering and classification of uh, big data sets uh, can be performed uh, in a very fast uh, manner and very accurately. Uh, here uh, I reported several main references uh, uh, discussing uh, all the technical, uh, scientific uh, and also mathematical details of uh, our approach. And uh, this was my last slide. I thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, you can share this uh, presentation, this, this lecture, and you can find many other interesting lectures on the EAG uh, YouTube channel. Thank you.